Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm so glad that you are here. I've gotten a few requests lately that I need to start posting a few more science videos. So this is a video that focuses on life science, which is a big portion of the GED or HiSET test. The best thing that you can do to get the most out of this video and prep yourself even more for the GED HiSET test is to click the link down below and download the PDF that I have that goes with this video. Great, so you've downloaded the article that goes with this. So now what I want you to do is I want you to quickly skim through the article and then look at the 10 questions that goes with it. But total, only take about a minute to do this. Effect of different fertilizers on plant growth. The purpose of this experiment was to determine the effect of five different fertilizers on plant growth. The fertilizers used were nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, organic, and a control group with no fertilizer. Tomato plants were planted in five pots, two plants per pot, and treated with each fertilizer separately. The height of the plants was measured every week for three weeks. The results of the experiment showed that the plants treated with nitrogen fertilizers had the greatest growth with an average height of 23.8 centimeters after three weeks. The plants treated with phosphorus fertilizer had an average height of 18.3 centimeters and the plants treated with potassium fertilizer had an average height of 16.5 centimeters. The plants treated with organic fertilizer had an average height of 20.1 centimeter, which is slightly less than the nitrogen treated plants, but higher than the phosphorus and potassium treated plants. The control group had the smallest average height of 11.2 centimeters. The chart below shows the average height of the tomato plants treated with each fertilizer over three weeks. The results indicate that the type of fertilizer used has a significant impact on plant growth. Nitrogen fertilizer was the most effective, followed by organic phosphorus and potassium fertilizers, while the control group had the least amount of growth. These findings suggest that farmers and gardeners should choose carefully, should carefully choose the right type of fertilizer to promote plant growth and optimize their yields. Now let's take a look at the chart that goes along with this experiment. So as you can see here, we have the different type of fertilizers in the left column, followed by the height of the plants after one week, then after two weeks, and then after three weeks. And now on to the questions, which you already took a glance at, so you know what to expect as we were reading you kind of had a few little light bulbs going off since you did know what to expect. What was the purpose of the experiment? Okay, to determine the effect of different fertilizers on plant growth. It was talking about different fertilizers, right? So let's put it maybe by that one. To determine the effect of sunlight on plant growth. Did it talk at all about sunlight? No, that would have been a completely different experiment. Maybe they would have had one right by the window receiving full sun, maybe one that received partial sun, morning sun, etc. But it didn't talk about sun at all. To determine the effect of water on plant growth. Again, it didn't talk about water. Now, if they were doing it properly, they would have watered each one the exact same amount. But it didn't talk about water at all, so that's not the answer. To determine the effect of soil on plant growth, different types of soil, no, it didn't talk about that. So the answer here is A, to determine the effect of different fertilizers on plant growth. Which fertilizers were used in the experiment? Guys, this one is way too easy, right? We've, we've got this, just look at the chart and mark which one. And as you can see, B is the answer, We've got nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, organic, and a control group with no fertilizer. Too easy, that's one of those uh, easy questions they just give you the answer, right? <laughs> so hopefully you got that one right. Which type of fertilizer had the greatest effect on plant growth? 
So now we're going to look at the chart. But if you remember back in the article, the second paragraph, it did outline which one was the most effective, right? And so if you look at the height of the plants after three weeks, you can see here, nitrogen is at 23.8 centimeters, phosphorus 18, potassium 16, organic 20, and the control group 11. So the one that was the highest is right here, which is nitrogen. So that's the answer D. What was the second most effective after nitrogen? Okay, notice here how it actually gives you the answer for the one right up above, right? So really pay close attention because sometimes as you're going through questions in the science test, you might actually see the answer in some of the other questions. So just really be mindful of that. Okay, so nitrogen is, is out, right? Which one is the second highest? You can see right here is the organic, which is at 20.1 centimeters. So A is the answer. Number six, what is the dependent variable in this experiment? So now we're digging in to the scientific method. And that is one of the most important things for you to know for the science test. So the dependent variable means it is dependent upon the experiment. Or in other words, it's what they are experimenting, right? It's the one that's going to give them the answers. So the type of fertilizer used that is not, they're not dependent. The results are not dependent on that. I mean, they kind of are, but um, that's not what we're measuring, right? So it's not that. The height of the tomato plant, so some of them are short, some of them are, are tall. It just kind of depends, right? So that is actually the answer, the height of the tomato plants. But let's look at the other ones too. The amount of water given to the plants, again, the water should be consistent. All of the water, they should give each one a certain amount and have that be the same thing. That's not the thing that they're testing. So a C is not the answer. And the temperature of the room, again, they're not testing the temperature. So the answer here is B, the height of the tomato plants. How did the researchers ensure that the tomato plants were treated equally in terms of light exposure temperature, and water intake. Okay, so they randomly assign each tomato plant to a treatment group. Not really, right? They're all in the same room. They're all kind of doing the same thing. So they're not going to be like, oh, this one's over here and this one's over here, right? They measured the light, temperature, and water intake for each plant and adjusted them as needed. Did they adjust them? No, because that's not what we're testing. We're testing the fertilizer, right? So yes, they're probably being consistent with the water, the temperature, and the light, but they're not testing that. They used a standardized greenhouse with controlled environmental conditions. Yeah, so probably, right, they're, they're being very consistent. They want it to all sort of be the same so that they don't have any other variables except that nitrogen or the fertilizer that they are testing. Okay, they relied on natural environmental conditions. So if they just did this outside, maybe it was a cold day, maybe it was a hot day, right? That is not being controlled and therefore your, and your experiment is not going to be as accurate. You wanna make sure that it's completely controlled as much as you can. So the answer here is C. They used a standardized greenhouse with controlled environmental conditions. What is the significance of using a control group in this experiment? So control groups are actually used frequently in science experiments. So remember that just in case you have more questions that relate to this. So the control group really just says, all right, this is how it is if we don't apply any fertilizers. And it really just helps make sure that things are going okay. It's not necessarily other things that are coming into factor. This is how it is without the fertilizer. And maybe it'll do better, maybe not. <laughs> okay. So it allows the researchers to observe the natural growth of tomato plants without any external influences. 
So again, it's not necessarily those external influences as we just talked about. It is really the fertilizers, right? So that's not the answer. It ensures that the results are not due to chance or other factors. So there we go, right? It's not the soil, right? It's not these other things, right? It's just determining on the different fertilizers. C, it allows researchers to compare the effect of different types of fertilizers on plant growth, right? Uh, not really dealing with that. I mean, the rest of the experiment, yes, is checking the different fertilizers, but the control group is making sure that this is what it's like without the fertilizers. Two, it helps eliminate individual differences between the plants. So some plants are gonna grow and some plants aren't, right? I just started my garden for the year and some of my plants are growing and some of my plants are not. And so some seeds are good and some seeds are bad, right? So having a couple of plants per pot is going to be really helpful to get rid of the individual differences between the plants, right? So the answer here is B. It ensures that the results are not due to chance or other factors by having that one little control group. What are some potential limitations of this experiment? So they only tested one thing, the fertilizer, right? Which kind of made some limitations, right? The use of only one type of plant, right? If they would have tried different types of plants, well, maybe a petunia or maybe a grape plant or something like that would do better with different types of fertilizers, right? They only tested the tomato plants. The short duration of the experiment. They only tested for three weeks, right? Maybe they should have tested for an entire growing season and then they would have been able to tell the difference between the different fertilizers. The lack of variation in the environmental conditions. Remember, they used a greenhouse, which controlled everything, right? If they would have put it outside and maybe a rainstorm, right? Maybe extra water this day because of the rain, or maybe there was a period of drought where they weren't getting as much water, right? All this did was test the fertilizers. So the answer here is D. Now, let me tell you something. If you're taking the GED or high set, you actually probably will not see all of the above. I've never seen all of the above in the practice test that I viewed, but you never know. Maybe, maybe you would, but chances are not. Which of the following factors, if varied between the groups, could potentially have affected the results of this experiment? So the type of soil used for each plant, right? The soil was the same. Whereas if it would have been varied, maybe this one has miracle Grow and this one has, I don't even know other types of soils, maybe just dirt from the ground, right? That could have varied things, right? The size of pots used for each plant, right? Maybe this one just has a tiny little pot and this one has a huge pot, right? That could make a difference because the tiny pot is constricted and the, the roots are just sort of intertwining, whereas the big pot, their roots are really spreading out, right? That could make a difference. The humidity of the environment. Some plants do really well in humidity and some plants do not, right? So changing of these things could have definitely affected the result. So the answer, just like before, is D, all of the above. Friends, if you didn't already, click the link down below to download these slides because like I said, I have a couple of extras in those slides. Now my friends, science is really just a reading test. So make sure you watch my reading videos because those are going to help you with the science. And of course, remember that you are enough in this world. I believe in you and make sure that you believe in yourself too. Peace, my friends.